Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a hot minute. Uh, I've been uh, taking the last month or so off YouTube just to have a bit of a break. And uh, now we're back to look at Deepin from Ubuntu 20.10. Now, this is like an old video in that I've been wanting to make this for quite some time uh, because I do have quite a lot of thoughts on Deepin's new desktop environment way back seems like a long time ago sometime last year i looked at deep in when it was when it first the deep in desktop version 20 when it first launched as a part of deep in the parent operating system and uh, and i had some thoughts and it definitely liked the idea of the desktop but didn't love the underlying os beneath it so today what i want to do is have a look at what this uh desktop environment has grown into over the last six ish months and look at what it's capable of on top of a more familiar base to Western audiences being of course Ubuntu 20.10. Now I realize that we are mere weeks, months, we're about a month away from Ubuntu 21.04, which will also have presumably an Ubuntu deep in release. So this is late to the party, I understand. But come along for the ride and see what we can learn from Deepin as a desktop environment running on top of an Ubuntu base. Let's jump in and have a poke around. Now, in my Deepin video, I did kind of slam Deepin for being a little bit too Mac-ish. Um, and while that criticism was met with a very uh, observant comment uh, from a lot of uh, fellow commenters in the YouTube space uh, around the fact that technically Deepin had this design language figured out and put it out in the wild before Apple went with their very rounded corners and the colorful bubbly Fisher Price squared off kind of icons. And uh, that's technically true, I think. Um, it is just interesting to see how more touch friendly and touch designed uh, user experience and user interface designs are making their way back into the forefront in the desktop world. Uh, it just, this whole interface, even compared to what Deepin used to look like in versions 15.x and earlier, uh, by comparison, this desktop cries out for a touchscreen. And whether you choose the different menu layouts that you have options to choose from, whether you prefer a Windows or Mac-ish layout, the fact remains that Deepin as a desktop seems to embrace this idea of touch centric or at least very smooth, rounded, large, bright, colorful controls. All right, so let's talk about what do you actually get as a part of Ubuntu Deepin versus mainline Deepin. Well, a lot of it boils down to the underlying uh, OS, obviously, but also software management where the uh, proper Deepin release uses the Deepin software store, which is definitely geared towards a Chinese audience. And a lot of the web apps and services promoted through the store are aimed at Chinese services. Uh, obviously, Ubuntu Deepin being based on a more Western focused Ubuntu distribution of Linux uh, uses this bog standard Ubuntu software center. It would be fun to see something a little more bespoke, but coming up with a software manager is not easy to do, let alone do right. So I completely understand their call for just using the bog standard uh, Ubuntu software store. Now it is interesting to note here that when you open up the GNOME software store, you'll notice that the delicious theming that is uh, famous to the deep in desktop kind of disappears in lieu of a more standard and waiter theme for a lot of the GNOME apps. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But thankfully, the standard waiter theme blends in fairly nicely with the overall Deepin desktop. Now, the other thing to note here is with the, the software center, you do have the option of installing from the Snap Store. Uh, and so those options are available to you. And is it just me or does the software center here in Deepin seem to be just a smidge more responsive than what it is on the normal Ubuntu desktop. It's probably my imagination more than anything, but it looks clean, it works well enough, and uh, that's all I'll say about software management in Deepin. Obviously, you still have the command line that you can do whatever you want with, 
but there are no deep in specific tools for managing software here. There is, however, pretty much deep in specific tools for basically everything else. File manager, custom. You have lots of different views to pick from, whether you are wanting a descending details list, icons only, preview pane or not. And also it is worth mentioning that you get the spacebar preview, which I freaking love in any file manager. Um, it is kind of interesting in that they choose to aggressively round off the corners in the same way that they do with the rest of the windows to make it fit in. But that does mean you lose a bit of content on the edges here. And the same is true when previewing videos. If you're ever designing a desktop environment, spacebar preview is one of those mandatory things in my humble opinion. Let's talk about the settings panel because while most of the settings remain intact here, there are some settings that uh, have been kind of removed or tinkered with a little bit uh, so that the deep inside of things doesn't conflict. It's also worth noting that the installer does use uh, the Calamares installer as opposed to the custom deep in installer, um, which is a bit of a bummer in my opinion, because the deep in version 20 installer has got to be one of the best looking installers I've ever seen. And the theming and accent colors and all of the effects are still available here uh, as they are on Deepin proper. Um, what I will say is that the choice of fonts, the Noto Sans uh, font, I can't remember if I've customized this font or not, because what I've noticed is that there is a very nice Noto Sans font, which is the CJKJP. And then there is the standard Noto Sans display. I don't know if that's the same font that Deepin desktop users, but uh, it seems to look pretty good here. It is nice that you can customize how rounded you want the corners, whether you want them to have a small, medium or large uh, bevel around the corners, not bezel, bevel. Uh, and that describes how much the, the corners are rounded off, how much gets chopped off. And you can also control other things like transparency and whether or not you have a day or night theme and when that comes on, uh, whether you want it coming on automatically or not. The rest of these system settings are really clean. They've even borrowed the same goofy battery icon that became a bit of a meme. Anyway, compared to the slide out panel that used to be on deep in desktops of yesteryear, I do prefer this approach. It's more consistent and modern with what current consumer expectations are. If I was going to give you a bit of a theme for this whole, uh, I guess, video, is that to me, the deep in desktop, and especially here on Ubuntu, feels like a consumer grade desktop environment. What do I mean by that? I mean that the tools, the software, the design, and the desktop environment itself caters very well to current consumer desktop trends. However, I do think that this desktop would still be frustrating to power users or to those who are experienced in the Linux world. They're still gonna be better served with something like KDE Plasma, which just has infinitely more configurability and, and productivity polish. Um, whereas Deepin is almost by far the most surface level polished distribution, the most deeply superficial desktop environment. Let's go with that. As you can see, I've switched the panel over to the more Windows centric panel. It is nice that you do have some customization over whether you want the panel appearing on the bottom left, right, or the top of the screen, because you can kind of get a little bit of a unity looking uh, thing going on here, especially if you choose to do the full screen uh, dash style launcher. Uh, that's quite nice. I enjoy that. This also gives us a much better view to see what comes pre-installed on the desktop, so we'll run with that. The custom apps to the deep in desktop are file manager, music, movie, screen capture, image viewer, album, document viewer, text editor, terminal, and control center, system monitor, boot maker, device manager, and I think calendar, calculator, font manager. There's a lot. The, the portfolio is really building out as I noted in the deep in V20 video. And then pretty much everything else here is standard from the Ubuntu repositories. Interesting to note here is that Firefox and Thunderbird both have an interesting uh, window control scheme going on here that's not a waiter, but it's not the rounded off edges that we're used to seeing from the deep in apps. So I don't know what kind of customization they have going on for that specifically, but it looks okay. This has got to be one of my favorite uh, system managers out there. 
And most of this software is all being ported over from Deepin into a custom uh, PPA that is maintained by uh, the developers of Ubuntu Deepin. I would love to know what the relationship is between the Ubuntu Deepin developers and Deepin proper. I believe that the Ubuntu Deepin team did attend a developer conference that was specifically for Deepin, which is cool. So I'm hoping once again that this distribution will stick around for some time and, uh, and not fall by the wayside anytime soon. There is still some uh, lack of customization and even some of the apps are a little bit limited in features compared to their GNOME and KDE software counterparts. But I think this is an excellent step in the right direction and given another year, possibly two years of feature updates and enhancements to the Deepin desktop, I think Ubuntu Deepin could be a very real contender for an amazing LTS release come 22.04. I hope it sticks around that long. Let me know your thoughts about the Deepin desktop and how it's matured over the last year or so in the comments below. Stay tuned for more videos coming your way very soon as we're gonna be looking at Magia 8 as well as Netrunner and a few other KDE bits and pieces from the 21.04 release. And then we have a big special open source apps extravaganza coming up very soon. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the next one.